Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, we're talking about virtual reality tennis. My guest is Dr. Gregory Gettinger, the CEO and founder of VR Motion Learning. He's joining us from Vienna, Austria. Welcome, Gregory. Thank you for having me. So what is virtual reality tennis? Well, as you said, you play tennis in virtual reality, you play tennis in the metaverse. But what is really different here, you know, compared to any kind of VR tennis game is that we have really converted the ball physics from the real court into the virtual world. So you do all the authentic moves and technique as you would do on the real court in a metaverse. And that's a big, big difference. All right, let's show the teaser. Gregory, how did VR tennis come about? Well, you know, when you play tennis on the, on the real court, you do not really know if you're improving and, and, and how your strokes are doing. And you have to really book um, a court and, and, and go there. And if you want to play a tournament, you have to drive somewhere. So there was a real need to digitalize tennis and make it online. Um, and th that was basically um, the task we, we, we went through. But I, as again, I, I didn't want to have any kind of, you know, stupid, you know, engine um, just with the ball physics. I wanted, wanted to have the real thing. And, and that's why we, we made all the research and development to, to convert the, the real environment into the virtual environment. So what is, the, what is your background in tennis and otherwise that has allowed you to do this? Well, I'm a really lousy tennis player. Um, you know, I, I think I played 100 tournaments and out of the 100 tournaments, I think I just won two and that was the lowest grade you can get. So I had to do something with my tennis. I started very, very late. Um, I played basketball before. So, um, so that's my experience with tennis. But I love the sport. It's a fantastic sport and you can play it in any age at any level. So and it's really fun. All right. So... How does virtual reality tennis work? Well, quite easy. You, you just put on the headset. In our case, it's the Oculus Quest or it's an H, uh, HTC. Um, and all you need is the Wi-Fi and off you go. Um, you just download our application. Um, it's it's one, uh, one button you, you, you press. Um, and basically you are already on a virtual tennis court. And, and off you go, you, you can play with a ball machine, you can, you can play with, with anyone um, um, who is online um, and you even can play with yourself. So, you know, if you play with yourself, you, you shoot the ball over the net and you get instantly on the other side and you have to shoot your own ball back. So that's a very fun game. Um, so that's what's happening. And you just put on the headsets and off you go. All right. So why would uh, someone play VR tennis rather than play on a court? Oh, there are many, many reasons, many, many reasons. Well, there are two, two sides. The one is the entertainment factor, and the other one is the training aspect. So for the training aspect, if I want to improve my technique, my swings, my strokes, and I want to know, you know, what is my velocity of, of each stroke, what's the spin, what's the trajectory, I'm hitting the target, all that stuff, and if we want to follow that up. It's a great training session. I have ball machines with all kinds of exercises. So you can really train your, your technique in the living room, at home, wherever you are. Um, that's the one side. But the other side is if you want to play your friends and you know it's, it's hard to, to go somewhere to a court or your friends are in a different city, a different country, uh, and you still want to play them and have fun with them, or if you want to, you know, have a tournament and you don't want to travel somewhere and, and still make some prize money, um, then virtual tennis is, is the solution. So I could be playing against you today, Gregory, and you're in Austria and I'm in, um, in Hawaii. Yes, all you need is a headset and then off we go, yes. Absolutely. All right, so let's pull up the training video.
so what is that show? Well, what you have seen is um, all the training exercises with the ball machine. So you can train your your forehand, your your backhand slice, and you have different kind of training exercises depending on the level where you where you start with. So the 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 very first exercise on the beginner level is that you have a standing ball which you just hit over the net um, and then it gets faster and faster and the and the, and the exercises get um, more and more competitive and and, and difficult um, so it's basically you know everything you do with a ball machine also on the real court you can do on a virtual court but you have all the scores and leaderboards and rankings and all that stuff uh, on, on top of it so that's what you show what what you what you see here I don't think I've played tennis since I was in high school. So if I started playing um, with this, would I be able to start from kind of a low level and then kind of improve by using this? Well, you know what? It's, it's crazy. If you really start tennis with us, what we do is we compare, for example, your forehand stroke with an, with an ideal forehand stroke. So we will give you hints what how to improve your technique step by step. So we tell you on the forehand stroke, you know, hit the ball um, a little bit earlier, you know, um, um, follow through your arm over the shoulders, you know, have your elbow up, all that stuff. So we bring you into the right technique. And the idea is that you learn such a fantastic technique that you can go the next day to the real court and play tennis like a professional. So one of my friend's daughter, she's a high school student and she's a very good tennis player. If she used this, could she um, kind of move up a level or improve? Yes, that's the idea. That's why we call ourselves motion learning. The idea is that you can that you improve your technique, but it's not only the, the technique, not only the, the, the stroke analysis. In, in tennis, you have a lot of technical training, you have tactical training, you have mental training, and you have physical training. So for example, mental training, we can put you into the US Open final, third set, you know, tie break, second serve, and the spectators are yelling at you, and you still have to deliver your second serve, just like in training. So you, you, you can do some kind of mental training, which you would never be able to do on the real court. Because if I play tennis on the real court, I have maybe two or three spectators, and that's a lot. Usually, nobody watches me. Um, and and in, in in virtual life, you can you can do everything basically, and you can you can make up everything. Um, also, on the tactical training, you know, I could play Andre Agassi, you know, in in on the, on the virtual court, exactly the same pattern he plays with his spin, with his velocity, with his strengths and weaknesses. So when I play him really on the next day, which I will never do anyway, but if I would play him the next day, you know, I would be prepared and I would play much better than just, you know, starting to play with him. That's fantastic. Okay, so um, uh, is this, okay, so a lot of athletes will visualize their game, okay? And so this is more than visualization, right? I mean, you're actually um, doing the physical as well as the mental, correct? Correct, correct. And I, I always make that comparison. If you, if you watch the US Open and you're laying on the couch and eating potato chips, the next day you will be four to 5% better in tennis and you will be motivated to go to the court. You want to go to the court and, and, and play tennis. Now, with us, you improve not 4 to 5%, you improve 20 to 30%, and you are eager to play tennis and, 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 and show it. So it's, it's a real motivator um, um, out of the virtual world to go into the real world and back. So it's a hybrid solution. So you talked about playing Andre Agassi. Agassi by um, kind of virtually. Do you think that playing VR tennis helps people who, you know, serious players overcome their anxiety so they won't choke when they actually play? Well, I just made this example with the mental training. You know, how often can a 
professional really trained, you know, being in the US Open and the final third set tiebreak second serve. You know, you don't have that many um, um, occasions where you can train that. And in virtual life, you can do that. But I have to tell you one thing. Our application is not actually for the professionals, not for the top three, top hundred. We want to have something for the all recreational players, for everyone who wants to play tennis, from the beginners, you know, and and and, and just to having fun and, and learning the learning the game. So we're not really focusing on the on the top ten, even though you know they can you know improve the tennis too. But uh, I think they have other other tasks than than playing VR tennis. Okay, so let's show the ball exchange video. That was a Tough. tricky ball. Beauty, beauty. Here we go. That was a very tricky ball. The backhand, he's made it. Oh, you're always playing on my backhand. Yeah. <laughs> All, oh. All right, now we're going to hit oh, backhand. Boy. Oh, no. There we go. Backhand cross. <laughs> Did you see this backhand? Beauty. I'm yeah, getting better with good. my backhand now. All right. Oh, well. what a nice shot. Oh, I'm not going to make the mistake. Intense rally. You're going to make the mistake. No I'm not going to make the mistake. Oh, no. You're going to make it. Yeah, You're going to make the mistake, oh, not me. Oh, no. Too much pressure. That was a nice rally. Yeah. Boom. Ooh. All right, Gregory, tell us about that video. Yeah, that was an interesting video because it was it was me um, the 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 old fat guy in in, in, the, in the background playing against the tennis coach in, in the Netherlands. So I was playing in Vienna, Austria, and Sam was playing out of Amsterdam. Um, and Sam is a real good tennis player. He's a tennis coach, um, and you could see uh, the difference between him and me. Um, I made a little bit of a shortcut because in in our tennis game, you can define the space in which you play. So I define the space just one step right, one step left to make it easy for me. Um, but you also can define the space like, you know, four times four meters or even half a tennis court where you really have to run. Now, most of the people don't have that space in the living room. So that's why you have this flexibility. But in that video, um, I, you know, this was a Twitch video where, you know, you show how I'm playing live and, and Sam played live on the same on the same court same virtual court um and it was fun because we had a we, we really had a fun tie break um um, um on, on, on that evening so that was the video all right is there any way you could like handicap one player um no we don't want to we don't want to interfere into that so if somebody plays better than the other one he plays better than the other one. It's like here on that video, Sam is a much better tennis player than me. Um, we're not influencing that. So we, you have the, the real ball physics from the real court, and it's the same thing as in the real court. Um, so there's nothing you can um, um, make it better. The only way you could change around are, are two things. The one is I could make his space you know, larger than, than mine, so he has to run and I just stand around and, and, and play. That would be very unfair, but that's something we could arrange or could agree. And the second thing is, you know, we have different kinds of surfaces. You can choose if you want to play on clay, on grass, on hot court, uh, the temperature, you know, if it's, if it's, if it's uh, hot, if it's warm, if it's cold, what kind of height you have, because the ball physics are different. And the tennis player would know very well the difference between hard court and grass and, and temperatures, all that stuff. So I could, you know, if I play, I choose my favorite surface, which is clay and, and, and temperature, all that stuff. So I'm used to that ball physics um, and to that, to that environment. And the other one has to join me. So, so that's the only, the only advantage that you can have if, you, if you're playing VR tennis. You know, we've seen it uh, where you can practice with yourself and we can, we've seen double, I mean, singles. Can you play doubles in this? Theoretically, you could play doubles. Um, we have not put it into place yet because of liability issues, because in, in, with a headset, you're blind um, and you would not see the other one. And I'm a little bit afraid somebody would hit the racket on your head and we would have, you know, some kind of um, 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 problems there. 
Um, so, so far we are just focused on singles. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Um, now, is this a, a, a sport that would be something you could view for entertainment? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So when we, when we play, um, anyone can watch from any kind of angle. Um, so it's, you, you can even, you know, make a kind of a movie like in Wimbledon, where you can have a commentator and you can have a lot of fun. Um, and you can stream it on YouTube, on Twitch, or wherever you want to do it. You can send it live. Um, so it's, it's real fun. It's real fun. And you can record your games and, and, and watch it later and, and analyze it, uh, you know, even with a coach. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of things you can do. When you're looking at esports, one of the challenges is that there's a lot of violent games. And when the Olympic Games, when the IOC looks at possible Olympic sports, they look at Rocket League and a few others because they're not violent. I could see VR tennis being a possibility because it's not a violent game and it's a traditional game, but played in a virtual reality setting. What do you think? Yes, actually, it's not only the violence, um, it's also the physical activity. Um, because one of the reasons why I have done this project is my son is addicted to all these shooting games and he's sitting in his room, you know, on his computer and, 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 and pressing buttons all the time. And I wanted to, to get him physical active. Um, and not just doing the shooting games and doing something which, which really makes sense and where he learns something. But I knew I have to bring something which entertains him, which, which is fun for him, where he have rankings and leaderboards and scores and, and trophies and all that stuff. Um, so with tennis esports, people not only stop shooting stupid aliens, they start really playing a traditional sport, being active, learn something, and getting motivated to go to the real court out to the nature and play tennis. So that was the idea, you know, this, this, this hybrid um, solution. Sure. And it kind of reminds you of like these, like we and stuff where they do exercises that are, are, you know, you use kind of a video or gaming situation. Um, and certainly during COVID, a lot of people like myself have did a lot of, exercise by using zoom and so I, I think we understand it more now that we've had to do that so let's show the next video um hans Gregory, what does that video show? Well, that is a different kind of hardware. So um, that game was done between Hans and Georg with the HTC system um, with a larger space where they, you know, run around a little bit, um, like, like um, a five meters width and three meters in, in, into the length. Um, and I don't know if you have seen it, but they had a real racket in their hand, a real tennis racket with a, with a, um, um, with a, with a tracker. Um, and so that was a more authentic feeling of, of tennis because in the first one, which you have seen me playing against Sam, we had the Oculus and we had no tennis racket. We had the controls in our hand. And now, now we have a real racket in the hand, which, which gives a tennis player more authentic feeling because you have the weight, the balance, the feeling, the touch of a tennis racket, um, and that makes it more authentic. So um, what have you done in order to get this out to the consumer? Um, we are right now in a, in a better phase on, on, on the Oculus App Lab. Um, and uh, we have a, a few thousand players right now in the system. Um, and we will launch the whole application in the summer with a lot of entertaining features. Um, and we will start a tennis league um, um, at the end of the year. So we're going to go out to 
the gamers. We're going to go out to the tennis clubs. We're going to go out to the tennis players. Um, we're going to, you know, go out via social media and 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 via, you know, our community to bring it out to the to the people so they get known to it. So, what have people been saying about it as they test it? Well, I always get it. Wow, um, that's 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 actually standard. You know, everyone who puts down the headset and played VR tennis the first time says, "Wow, it's unbelievable." Um, uh, that's nice. That's nice. Um, but there must be more than that um, than just the wow effect. And the more thing which we want to bring in is the learning skills, the the learning, the learning which which comes with the technique and and, and other things. And the fun element of the entertaining and 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 the uh, the competition and and um, the real esports thing and prize money all that stuff. So that has to come on on top of it. So the wow effect is nice to have in the beginning, but to have a, a, a long lasting um, um, players and and retention, you need to have the whole package. So is your next next move to to do golf? V VR. <laughs> well, with our ball physics, you can do all kind of ball, you know, ball sports. It's it's not only golf. You can do cricket. You can do baseball. You can do um, table tennis. You can do um, um, uh, miniature golf. You can, you know, there's a lot you can do with the with the ball physics. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, I think uh, golf and baseball would be really good applications of this because of the need to practice um, the swing. Um, and I, I think that that would give people that opportunity. Absolutely. So what do you, how do you visualize the future of VR tennis? Well, in the future, it's going to be far more um, open and, and flexible. So, for example, you have seen people playing tennis, you know, from from one country to the other uh, without problems. Well, in the future, you will also go to the net, talk to your opponent. You know, you will have an, a tennis star there. You're going to, you know, if you take Andre Agassi, you're going to ask him, hey, Andre, you know, how did you win the last U.S. Open? How was it? And, and how is your family doing? And you will talk to him and he will say, OK, here, I give you uh, I give you a fan card and, and, and by the way, you want to have a T-shirt and all that stuff. And so there's going to be much more action, much more socializing, much more um, um, other stuff going on than just the, the sport alone. So uh, that's the one part. The other part is going to be the league, the tennis league. Um, um, in, in tennis, you have no New York Yankees, uh, you know, against uh, Buffalo Buffalo, whatever, you know, um, you have individuals playing in tournaments. You know, you have four Grand Slams, you have a, the Davis Cup, and that's about it. But there's nothing like the Football League, nothing like the NFL, nothing like uh, um, um, all these team sports. So I would guess that's going to come up because um, prize money is going to fall in. Um, sponsors are going to come in. Uh, people are going to appreciate that you don't have to travel anymore. You know, Corona is 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 is, is one part of the thing, but the time consumption to go to tournaments uh, is 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 a second thing. Um, people want to have quick and 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 fun um, 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 games. And also the learning, people become more impatient in learning something. They want to be more effective, more efficient if they learn something and not just be, you know, spending hours and hours to get one move a little bit better. You know, I can also see this as a way people can play tennis in the winter because uh, a lot of people can't. And so it, it's, it's kind of that same concept of having the uh, treadmill uh, or the Peloton uh, bike or whatever, so that you can train inside um, and then and then take your skills out to the court in the summer. What do you think about that? Yes, winter is the one side, but if you think about Las Vegas in the desert in mm. summertime, there's no way you would play you know tennis um, in the desert or in Saudi Arabia or in in in, in, in southern countries. Um, so yes, weather is a is a is is a is a greater um, um, factor in the whole thing. Winter and and summer, yes.
Sure. And um, so how do you think the pandemic has helped the development and kind of the reception of this? Well, as you know, COVID has accelerated all trends. Um, um, uh, gaming became far more popular, you know, popular. Um, the whole the whole virtual sport thing became more popular. Virtual interviews like this one, um, three years ago, not existent, you know, everyone is on Zoom. So the COVID has changed a lot. Uh, um, our behavior, the way we consume, the way we, we do sports, the way we train, the, the way we educate, um, many, many fields. Sure, and let's show the logo video. Gregory, it was great having you on. Can you uh, tell um, our viewers how people can find more ab about this and um, and how they can contact you? Yes, well, I think the easiest is, you know, if you have an Oculus Quest, you know, just just ask for tennis esports demo demo, and you you get our application, or you go to our website tennis. Um, um, esports.com um, and you, you you find the, the link there and just try it you know it's for free um, you know play tennis um, check it out have fun and yeah give me some feedback how you like it all right Gregory thank you so much I can't wait to try um, esports tennis <laughs> thank you for having me all right. So uh, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Make sure to tune in next week. Angela Hazlett and I will be talking about esports risk management. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.